Hello, welcome back to the Shintaro Higashi Show at Peter Yu. Today we're going to talk about how to prepare for competition. But before we do, please check out ShintaroHigashi.com for lots of new merch. I'm wearing it right <laughs> now. It's like a judo t-shirt. It's pretty cool, right? I like it. Oh, I and didn't then, know you dropped in, dropped new merch. Just I now. mean, it's been on there. It just doesn't yeah. sell, so no one knows about it. It's, like, <laughs> it's like a little Tatochi situation. It's pretty cool. Yeah, nice, I got nice. new content, video content out there, concise instructionals. Yeah. It's the best. It's great. Check it out, ShintaroHigashi.com. All right, <laughs> competitions. Yeah, that's right. So this was a suggestion from Alice there, uh, one of our patrons. You know, he dropped yep. uh, this suggestion in our Discord server. So if you, that's another way to connect with us, support us on Patreon and join our Discord server. Anyway, yep. all right. So how to prepare for competitions? You know, competitions yep. are a big part of judo training. Yeah. It's not for everyone, that, like you say, mm -hmm. but a lot of people want to do it. But it's definitely different from just going to practice, right? Yeah, So sure. I think uh, first we should touch on how to train for competitions, you know, because it is different from just like doing your drilling yeah. and randori. So how do we approach, approach that in, the, okay. in terms so, of judo? Before we like jump into the competition, I think, you know, this is the nuanced thing that I'm always talking about, yeah. right? Like who's preparing for what competition and what part of their cycle? You yeah. know, we're talking about an Olympic caliber athlete who wants to make it to the Olympic, the national level athlete trying to make the mm. Olympic team, or somebody just kind of break through the regional level, right? Yeah. Somebody that's going to the local competitions who've done it a few times, or who's never done it. That's a very different experience than someone going, you know, I don't know, to the East Coast Championships or something. So before different you, belt levels and all this stuff, right? You, you gotta, so you're saying, what you're saying is we gotta think about your goal and your experience level even yeah. before deciding on how to train for it. Yeah, let's start with yeah. the lowest level, not like yeah. the beginner level, right? Yeah. You're in the dojo, you're doing it, like doing Mandori in class and stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's start with that guy. All Great right. Competition. The beginner, yeah. So yeah. you're like first competition, you're, you're first trying First competition, to... you just started judo a couple months yeah. ago, you're a white belt. My advice is don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Say you're, what if you're, you know, green belt, brown belt, you're trying maybe to get gearing towards uh, your... Yeah, maybe yellow or something. You yeah. know, this is, I always say this, right? And then I don't really, I feel like a lot of people just kind of like, yeah, whatever me. Yeah. I say this, but like, if before you compete in your first tournament, go watch your first competition. Mm, watch it first. Yeah. Yeah. That way you familiar yourself, familiarize yourself with this thing, right? Right. And if you're there and you have people who are from your dojo who are higher level or your coach is there, you could sit there and talk about it. Right? Mm -hmm. Hey, that's my division. Or your coach would be like, hey, that's the guy that you're going to fight. Because right, the white belt right. could easily go, not know about weight classes or divisions or anything. Be like, yeah. I've had to fight that guy or that girl. Oh, I'm not going to do it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Commonly, like, I have female competitors that are like, oh, I want to go compete, but they don't have right. ranked divisions because there's just not as many in the local circuit. Right, They'll right. just bundle them together, you know, uh, and it'll be like an open weight class situation. They'll do like light, medium, heavy. And then mm. it's like any belt goes. And then the coaches say, hey, is it okay for these two to fight? Oh, Sometimes dude. the opposition's like a brown or right. a black belt, you know? And right. this, this girl just started, she's going to get slaughtered. So, that's not good. No, that's never, that's never good. So like, yeah. you know, you go to see the competition and the coach says, hey, that is your division. That mm. is the division that you'll be fighting in. You know, you could fight in the master's division or the regular adult division. Let's see what the competition looks like. Right, right. Right. And then you're giving them fair expectations of what to expect when they walk into the tournament. Right. Let's just say okay. like commonly for judo, white to green belt division. Generally. Yeah. Okay. The so if you're a white division, belt, right? Yeah. Yeah, they just call it that. You know, jiu jitsu tournaments, there's a lot more people doing it. Yeah. If you got a white belt division, a blue belt division, a purple belt division, they don't care right. if there's two people in the division or not. Yeah. Right? The, yeah. So if you are a white belt, you go, you're sitting with your athlete or your people, and you tell them like, hey, this is white to green. Uh -huh. Therefore, there may be a green belt on the cusp of getting a brown belt, right? right Are you right. okay with something like this? The weight mm. class is 198. The bottom is 178. Uh -huh. So if you're 179 pounds, you're on the smaller side of the spectrum. Right. Now you're smaller than everybody, and now you don't have as much experience as everybody. Right. Right? That guy's a yellow belt, but he's a wrestler. You see all these different types of people there, right? So now you're sort of setting up the stage of what to be able to expect. Mm -hmm. And if they go in and enter in that competition for the first time, there's a good chance to get bombed. Yeah. Right? And then they quit. And that's on you as a coach. Uh -huh. that's why I, I always say, like, hey, if somebody tells me I want to go compete, go watch one. I see. Go watch so one. You know, before even yeah. 
prepare and go watch one, you build up a realistic expectation. Yeah. Yeah. And then if they don't do it and they just sign up, they kind of already like lost my trust a little bit. Right. I mean, right, I said, right. oh, don't do it. I don't think you're ready. Or I don't, I wouldn't say yeah. I don't think you're ready, but hey, go watch one because, you know, it's good for expectations and that right. you've seen, understanding what's out there. Right. And then, you know, we'll plan accordingly. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Sometimes you'll get a guy that goes sees it and they're like, whoa, that was so much, you know, or it's right? such so that's a... the first and foremost thing before you even start preparing anything, go watch one to know what you're up against and then talk to your coach about it. Have an open, honest conversation about it. And if your coach is like, yeah, bro, you go out there and yeah. just kill everybody. And then it's not a nuanced conversation. Then you, you know, can you really trust this person? Such a nuanced person, Shintaro. This I'm is all a good, about nuance yeah. these days, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> which, is, which is very important. Not everything is black yeah. and white, right? Yeah. All right. So let's say this uh, our beginner yes, go, yes, went yes, to yes, watch a competition and decides to do it. Okay, yeah. like so. What do we do? What do we now put to prepare in inside the dojo? Okay, so being on the right weight, right, that's yeah. a huge walk. Trying to get in the best shape as you can. That's mm -hmm. second, you know, thing that you have to kind of do, right? Yeah, yeah. And then you have to sort of start preparing doing Rondorian fighting. Yeah. Right? And then you kind of got to go through the list of like, hey, what is my game against the righty? What is my game against the lefty? Do mm -hmm. I have the ability to distinguish those things? Do I go against other novices in the room or do I only go with black belts? Yeah. Because if you're being handheld by all the black belts and then they're taking false for you, you're going to be kind of surprised when, you know, some the, yeah. big, strong yellow belt's going to start, you know, coming at you. Right, right. With right. both claws. I mean, yeah. so that's so what, how, that's what you gotta do. How do you manage that? Just so you, do you, it, so we're talking about novice people here. Like, yeah, do you yeah. actually have them go against each other? And cause you're kind of against that. Right. Well, uh, you know, so I, I let like the green belts go against the white belts sometimes, green belts, yeah. yellow belts, kind of a thing. Yeah. I always like uh, a little bit of skill gap, you know, yeah. if it's very, very close, it's a little right. bit more dangerous because it's left control. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Uh, I see. But, you know, if two people are signed up for a competition, then they yeah. you know, they understand what's out there. They, you know, the expectations are set, right? They know exactly what they're getting themselves into, and they're both right. great athletes. And they've been sort of vetted through my process yeah. of saying, hey, you guys are qualified to be able to do this. Then those two can potentially work out with each other. I see. I yeah. see. So yeah. do you... Uh... But I also make it a business, my business, to uh. make sure that they don't get any... Yeah, too much special treatment. They get special treatment, right? A little bit. Right, right. But it's not visible to everybody from an optical standpoint. Like there's a hierarchical thing that the competitors yeah. are higher than the non-competitors in the dojo because it shouldn't ever be that way. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you you talk, you emphasize a lot. You emphasize, emphasize it. It's it not for everybody. Yeah. It really isn't. Yeah. But, you know, judo isn't all about competition. It's about self-betterment and learning yeah. and training and all these other things that come with it. You know, it's not one thing, right? It's judo for yeah. self-defense. No, no, that's par partial. Right? Yeah. But small segment of it. There's lots of different segments that come together for it to make this thing that everyone's right. here to get better, essentially. Right. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, you, Bon, do you focus on having them do randori more or do you do more situational drills? Both? Like, where would you put emphasis on? Like, for a little beginners? bit of both. Right. And this is the thing. Like, I can't dedicate my time to the yellow belt that's competing. Yeah. Period. Because there's 30 people in the room sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Gianni's gearing up for, uh, I don't know, nationals or something. And George yeah. is a black belt that we have black belts here and white belt. And that guy's brand new. And, you know, all these different things are factors. You know right, I mean? right. But if I was to dedicate my time to like someone that's like novice competitor and, you know, I would talk to them about position and I'll do lots yeah. of gripping drills and then let them understand like where they are like, yeah. as yeah. they're fighting, you know? Right. And competitive strategy is a whole other thing. Strategies and tactics are a whole other thing. You know mm -hmm. I mean, I've heard yeah. coaches just go out there and put your hands on the guy, but it's like, oh, it's tough. Right? You have yeah. to be taught how to put your hands on the guy. Until, Unless yeah. you have so much time in judo that everything is already sort of unconsciously done. Right, right. Like the Japanese aren't taught specifically how to grip. Good. They they just learn through. They like, literally the link up. They link yeah. up and then they start making this adjustment and then they're like, oh, this is my throwing position. And they're yeah. like making these micro judo movements. Yeah. Micro judo. Video coming. Yeah, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless drop. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of the times they don't have the time in to just develop these small, you know, niche things like naturally, right? So right. they have to be taught, you know? And yeah. What's the best bang for your buck? Like grip fighting. You know? Yeah. So what is the dominant position? What is a non-dominant position? Right. And letting that integrate with your abilities to attack. Right. 
fainting, misdirections, combinations, you know, direct attacks, right? And then sometimes it's like, you know, if you're going against a white belt, direct attacks are the best because they don't have the reactions yeah. to threats. They don't see the threat because yeah. they're just too dull, yeah. right? Yeah. The game is too dull. So, you know, talking about them with, both, with those kinds of things and drilling those specific scenarios. So you, you, know? you lay the foundation, kind of like this micro judo stuff with drills, situational drills, and then you add on the randori on top of that. Kind of. I don't go into yeah. too much depth about like the micro judo and the positional judo so much, right? Because uh, it's a lot more advanced. It's a lot more. Tool, right. You know what I mean? So a lot of it is like gripping, put the hands on here. Once yeah. you get good position, you want to be offensive. You want to attack first right. is generally the advice that I, I give see. to beginners because even if you're in dominant position, if they don't have the ability to do a good defensive thing, yeah, right, like they haven't experienced too many big osotogaris that the guys really try to take your leg off. Yeah, so yeah. even if you're in winning position, you can still get taken down. Right, right. Right. If you're very, very good at judo and you're in winning position, and the other guy's very, very good at judo, but they're in losing position, the likelihood of that person throwing you with osoto is very low. Yeah, yeah. Like if I'm winning in position, I really don't think anyone can throw me with osoto. Uh huh. Seriously. Whoa. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Maybe Pedro like. Pedro too. Oh, if he gives me the sleeve, then I could pin it down and I have this hand high by the collar yeah. and I have my hips back and I'm like yeah. shoving that hand down. Ready, set, go. You have eight seconds to throw me a soto. He won't be able to do that. No. Yeah, oh, okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. Nice. Right. <laughs> and if it's 20 seconds, it's like, oh, shoot, you know, I'll just go to Monage from there because I know I it's see. coming. Right. It's like, right, right. I know that's like a, you know, big, controversial, arrogant thing to say. You know, but but it's not. Well, it makes really sense. The case. I mean, it's yeah. like, yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I think seven out of ten is grip fighting almost. In like yeah, comfort. so it's yeah. like, but if you're a beginner, you know what I mean. You haven't developed a right, right, a sort of defense, maybe, right? Yeah, and then you believe a sort of coming, and then the society comes, and you get toppled right over, right? Yeah, but they haven't yeah. developed that sensitivity yet. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. So it's not this like mental game that you know, very, very like intricate systems and figuring things out and setting up traps. And it's not like that at the beginner and novice level. Right. So the right advice is like, hey, put your hands on and these, this is dominant. This is not so dominant, right? When you get here, you just start going. You're just showing them like yeah. happy pats, so to speak. Like, hey, kind of, yeah, yeah. Do these Couple of attacks, right? Show some that. feints, show some feints, see if they yeah. react, should do some misdirections and then go for it. Yeah. That's really. Right. The advice that I, I would do. And then yeah. that's how you would train them in the room. You know what I mean? Uh, and then it yeah. comes down to the fundamentals of doing big throws. Nagikomi, Tayo, yeah. Soto, Uchimata, hard, right? Yeah. So they're able to pull the trigger. Okay. Right. It's like bow, go in there, put your hands in, you're in dominant position, you show a couple of feints because you don't want to just go for the first thing and get countered. Right, right. Like Ochi. Everybody's yeah. good at countering Ochi. <laughs> it's so intuitive. It's just yeah. so intuitive to counter it. Yeah. Oh, shoot, yeah. I'm falling. Let me pull him back and go this one. You know, like everyone, yeah. anybody can do that. No kids can do it. Like without yeah. even learning judo. Yeah. So show some stuff, show some stuff, and then go for it. I see. And then you could train this. Naga call me wise. Like, hey, okay, dominant position, bang. Okay, ready? Show something, show something. Misdirection, bombing. Uh -huh. Right? And that's kind of a way to train it, you know? And uh, that will be my advice for sort of the novice. The kind of so uh, how about yeah so that's you know basically cover show them the basic grip fighting you know it's a build up some expectation and then you know work on the big throw you know and maybe some sprinkle some randori in it for novice people yeah how about yeah. so say let's say brown belts and up like or yeah. uh maybe start with hobbyists i don't know if you want to subdivide people into like who want to make it to the circuit or not but yeah, yeah. I mean, hobbyists, it's the number one thing about competition for hobbyists yeah. is like, you got to ask yourself the question, why do you want to do this? Right. Right. Yeah. And, you know, even as a, as a, like a brown belt and up. Yes. It's like, why yeah. do you want to do this? There's significant risks that come with this. There is yeah. no reward. There is a medal, but yeah. it's <laughs> a cheap, flimsy thing that <laughs> it costs like $9 to, it's like yeah. a, and yes, I get it. The signifies whatever it is. And you're testing yeah. yourself against the others. But it's like, why do you want to do it? Yeah. Right. Right. And then it, it comes well, out of that. You have to have a good reason to want to do it. You know? Well, what are some of the good reasons you think? 
I mean, like some people will understand like, hey, this is a good self-improvement tool, right? Yeah. I understand like, and I know because I, I've done this too, right? It's like doing one competition is very, very valuable because you get exposed to a lot of different styles. Yeah, yeah. So if my true intention with doing these things is improvement of judo, getting better, sharpening my skill, making myself a better human being, right? Uh, I want to pressure test my judo system. I want to make sure that I'm like a very strong person, mentally, physically, all this stuff and learn more and learn more and absorb. Yeah. And that's just my intent, right? Then yeah, you, you go for it, you know? But if yeah. you're like, a, I don't know, a contractor or something, your body yeah. depends, right? On right, right, right. you making a living, yeah. right? And you're coming to judo once or twice a week and you're just kind of there for the boys of the community, then it's a horrible thing to do, mm. right? Because mm. it's all risk and no reward. Yeah. Some people say, oh, I want to be stronger mentally. That's why I'm going to do this, right? I want to make myself yeah. strong mentally. I want to be able to overcome. I want to be able to like be able to fight through fear. Yeah. Okay. That's great. That's a good reason. Yeah. Yeah. But let's just say you go and, you know, there's, there's a lot of moving factors like coaches are there, whatever it is, and they have yeah. a breakdown and then they just kind of, it just goes the wrong way. Uh, they completely freeze and they break down and they get bombed and they get crushed. And now they have crippling fear. Their worst fear has come true. Okay. Right. And the coach isn't particularly there to like sue them and talk to them and let him understand what happened because he's off somewhere, you know, coaching someone else maybe. Yeah. That guy's probably worse off now from going into that competition because his worst fears about himself came true. That's a big risk. Yeah. Huge risk. Never, so, yeah. Never yeah, really thought a, of it that way. Yeah, yeah. So this is the thing, like, you know, you bring a team of 20 people, how many of those people, you know, if I just say, all right, guys, we're going to have this competition. Everyone who wants to go sign up, bye. Right? Yeah. How many of those people out of those 20 people are going to fall yeah. into that category? Right. They're worse off, you know, than if they had not. Oh, uh, there's going to be a couple. I'm going to say like yeah. three or four people. You know, yeah, I've had that experience with like people who would freak out at yeah. these things and like panic and be like, oh, man. And now their anxiety levels are even higher. It's like, oh, man, like if I can't do this under this control situation, like I've been doing martial arts for five years, like. Uh, if I ever got, you know, in a confrontation on the subway, like, ah, uh, you know, uh -huh. so, right. And with those people, if you can identify that, you could little by little overcome it. Yeah. Little by little overcome it, but there needs to be a progression towards that. You know yeah, what I mean? You can't just be yeah. thrown into the lion's den, I guess. So if yeah. I identify that person, yeah, okay. And I generally want to help them and they're like, yo, listen, this is the reason why I'm building this competition. Mm -hmm. Right. I was like, okay, let's step back. Right. All these guys are going out there, you know, maybe they're just fearless because they had a rough childhood or something. Who knows? Uh, right? They're just like tougher. Yeah, they yeah. wrestled and they competed in sports yeah. in high school. Like, listen, you never competed in any any sport ever. You're an accountant. Right. You've been a nerd your whole life. Let me help you with this, right? <laughs> he really wants to do it, you know? Yeah, yeah. First and foremost, sign up for 10 private lessons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, no, with no. some mental exercise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do some Reiki. <laughs> right? yeah. I won't even be in the room. No. <laughs> but first and foremost, we're going to start building up yeah. that side in practice specifically. Someone right. new comes into the room. Okay. Mm -hmm. you that's get, a challenge. You that's get a nervous, challenge. Right? challenge, yeah. right? And yeah. this is the thing. There's mat one. You know mat one, the first mat where oh, the people yeah. are. Everyone watching that mat. Yeah, yeah. No one watching the last Lost. section of the mat, right? That's right. But it's a progression. New guy comes in. I look at this guy. I work out with this guy. I make, you know, the biggest guy in the room go with the guy. Yeah. He's relatively safe. Okay. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. do tiny toshi. He doesn't do crazy stuff. He's not that great of an athlete, and, but he's appropriate to go to back there and work out with this guy who I'm yeah. trying to build up. Yeah. It's his first time. I never saw him before. He's scared yeah. of him. They yeah. eyeballing each other, you know, because they're walking uh, up and down the door looking at each other, right? Like that guy's around my size. Like he's, I've never seen yeah. him before. I hope he's not a killer. I go, hey, listen, man, this is your test, right? We're going to go out there. Yeah. You're going to try. You're going to do your system. You're going to mm -hmm. do your best, put your hands on the get, you're going to show some stuff, you're going to go for it, okay? This is test yeah. number one, go for it. You got it. Put him in the back, no pressure. Mm -hmm. I'm going back there, right? And then hopefully That's by then yeah. we have a, a relationship, me and that athlete, particular athlete. Right. Because yeah. if he's like, oh, I don't want to let him down, and it just adds to more pressure, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if all things are proper and right, which majority of the times I'm not always doing the right thing, I can't stress this enough, right? He trusts me. He knows that, I'm the guy in his yeah. corner that I, I want what's best for him. I go back there. I'm like, listen, you got this, bro. Just do your best. Okay, just do your best. It's fun. It's fun. It's step one, right? So set him up for success. Set him for success. He goes out yeah. there. And, you know, usually when I do something like this, I know that this guy's going to have the upper hand, you know, especially with yeah. guests. Right? That's the yeah. thing about guests are a double-edged sword, you know, yeah. because sometimes they're killers. Sometimes they're dangerous. Who knows what the hell happened? 
Right? right. I'm also not trying to have a guest come in and get injured on my mat either. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it's a sweet spot. Yeah. In terms of like dual game, right? Right, right. I go back there, he does a good job, and it's like, hey, that's what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. And then that's going to build. Feel, remember this feeling? We're going to build on this, right? You enforce mm. it. Hey, you did a great job, buddy. Now you're getting somewhere, right? And then you're just building on top of that, and before you know it, right? Nice. You've built this person up little by little, and then you go into a competition, you know, and he may be a brown belt, but you give him a yellow belt. Then, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm not, I'll never do that. I'll yeah. never do that. A but little sandbagging. That, that's kind yeah. of the idea, you know? Yeah. To prepare these guys for competition. You can't just throw them in the, in the thing, right. not knowing who's going to be there or what. And, uh, you, you got to build them up mentally. Like, up. like uh, even, even as like brown belts, like, yeah. uh, black belts, you know, it's, it's a totally yeah. different animal. Yeah. And, totally different animal. And then sometimes yeah. you need that team thing. Everyone has to go. Yeah. You know, I have a hard time going to these tournaments now because I have a daughter and you know, yeah. I'm a single father. So it's like, I'm not going to burn a Saturday right. being at these things. I know that's, you know? that's the one of the big thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's tough to justify, you know what I mean? But there's guys who go on their own. Yeah. And they do pretty good. You know, we have mm. a novice guy that goes to like all the local tournaments and he's oh, crushing it. He loves it. Yeah. Oh, nice. So that's fine. You know? So now we cover hobbyists. Uh, how about like people who want to make it to the circuit? I, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know what Gianni is doing. Yeah, he wants to make his goal. Is, yeah. 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 Well, you got to understand how, like, the system for the competitive roster is set up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You got to look at the point system. What's worth yeah. going to? You know, because yeah. Gianni has a full-time job. He can't go to everything. Right, right. Right? What level tournament is it? What level, how many points you get? Yeah. Right? In the U.S., it's generally, you know, C, D, E are yeah. the level tournaments, right? You know, national level tournament, regional right, level right. tournament, you get this yeah. many points. You get on the American roster, ranking yeah. roster. And then if you're top five of that, you have the right to go to the international tournaments. Mm -hmm. Even there, there's levels. So the, yeah. Grand Slam, Grand Prix, you know, <clears throat> Continental Opens, things like so that. You have to be, you have to, you need someone that knows about all these levels and st strategize. You kind of do, yeah. Because yeah. then mm -hmm. you pick out your tournaments that you're going to go yeah. to for in the beginning. You get this first selection, Gianni's like, which one should I go to? What do you think about this one? And it was like Portugal, you know, England, yeah. whatever, whatever that was, right? It's like in yeah. Europe. I was like, dude, yeah. the European Continental Opens are much harder. Okay, yeah. Pick the Pan American Continentals or the, uh, the Oceanic Continentals because the same value in terms of points, and you're not yeah. going to get those killers. You're not going to get the guys from Russia. You're not going to get yeah. those guys in the South American ones. You're going to get Brazil, Cuba. You're going to get yeah. those guys for certain. But if you don't fight them first or second round. You could draw them later on in the bracket. Point, yeah, you yeah. get points for those early wins. Yeah. And that's going to help you be seated for the bigger ones once you get yeah. to the Grand Prix and the Grand Slams. Now, with yeah. my issue, a lot of the times, I'll get to the Grand Prix and the Grand Slams, I'll fight a top 10 guy in the world and get killed. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. I mean, not killed all the time, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, uh, yeah, you're on yeah. ice and all of them. Yeah. So you got to like, like, yes. yeah. <laughs> so you got to pick the tournaments appropriately. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then based on where you are in terms of level, right, you want to make sure you peak at the right time. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you're a national, international level athlete and you need to go just do a tune-up at U.S. Nationals, then yeah. you don't need to peak for U.S. Nationals. You're training all the way through. You're just right. training hard that, that whole week. Like nothing is, nothing's different. Okay. That's part of your training almost. That's part it's of like your training. Day. Yeah. Yeah. You get on the plane, you go, you compete, you do a camp, whatever, right? And you come yeah. back and you're back at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if you're fighting in a, let's just say a Grand Prix and you're yeah. a candidate to medal, but you're sort of not quite there, it's a little bit above your, right? Yeah. Then you want to peak for that, peak for something yeah. like that. Right? Or if you've made a Pan Am team, that's the biggest points, the Pan American right, Championship, right. Pan American Game, because that's the best value for your body. Yeah. And so the path to being an Olympian in you know the last 12 years that they've been doing the system yeah. Is to be the highest ranked athlete in the world by going to these Grand Prix, Grand Slams, yeah. or World Cups, and Cup Opens, and then be the highest ranking athlete in the world in the U.S. in your division, uh -huh. which qualifies you to go to the Pan Am Games of the Championships. And that tournament, the uh -huh. Pan American Championship for the Games, is worth so many points. Uh -huh. So if you medal there, you fly up the world ranking list. Mm -hmm. European games, Asian games, Pan American games, Oceanic games, African games. 
Right, right. The continental yeah. ones. Okay. Real, not the continental open. Oh, okay, okay. That's, a, that's so, the lowest tier. The, it used to be called World uh, Cups. Now they're called uh, Continental. Yeah. Yeah. Man, it's a, a different world. Yeah. So, so you gotta, yeah. yeah. Make it an Olympic team. Without a doubt, you have to get to the Pan Ams, right? Because yeah. you're not going to go to the Grand Prix and the Grand Slams coming out of a, a soft country right. like the United States for, in terms of judo, right? Yeah. And then yeah. consistently medal at these things. Right. Very rare. You get yeah. Travis Stevens did it, you know? Yeah. Caleb did it. Yeah. Majority of the guys who are on the international circuit, U.S. brings 30 people. Who's meddling? Yeah. Maybe one, maybe two. Yeah. Yeah. Who's losing first round? 95% of them. <laughs> yeah. Know? Right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Because they also, that's how brackets work anyway. Yeah, that's how yeah. brackets work. And that's yeah. just how it is because you draw the yeah. higher seeded like, athlete yeah. in the world. Yeah. So it's not really just a ding on the U.S. athletes. They're great athletes and all. And I, I'm, you know, a big fan of them. I root for yeah. them. But if Pan Am is the thing that's going to determine whether you're going to make it, <clears throat> you want to peak for that, right? You want to be at the right weight, the cut weight, to be in the right weight mm -hmm. class. So that's the component of it, right? Yeah. Making the weight properly which was my biggest issue all the time. I hated, uh, you know, making weight per se, right? Yeah, you got to be diligent with your diet and stuff. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dieting and then weight cutting is a completely different thing. You have to diet down and right. be as lean as possible. That's yeah. really the key. You know what I mean? And this is the thing. I could, I'm 220 right now and normally yeah. I'm 220, right? Walking yeah. around. But I would cut down in air quotes to 178 sometimes. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? You can't watch, you can't watch uh, videos on... Shintaro's website. But well, this is the I thing. Mean, on channel, how I'm he carrying <laughs> substantial amount of body fat, like yeah. most time. Uh -huh. So could I potentially diet down to like 180 and then yeah. compete? Me being shredded? Yeah. Yes. But this is the thing. I'm a little bit undisciplined in the eating, right? I'm like, <laughs> eating, I love chicken parm. I love pizza, burgers, right? You know what I mean? So I'm yeah. like, kind of yeah. eat what I want. And back in the day, I was drinking a lot more. So yeah. I was drinking, hanging out, eating food, ice cream. I used to eat a pint of ice cream a night. Every single night I did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like I'll be like 198, one, you know, like 200, 205. And then I'll be like, oh, shoot, I got to diet down. I diet down to like 195. And then I'll cut, yeah. you know, 10, the 15 rest, pounds, yeah. like, you know, the week off of water weight. Yeah. You know, like, can you compete optimally? No. You know, yeah. would all the coaches tell me that? Yes. Would I listen <laughs> to them? I mean, I, I understood it. Yeah. But I would make the same mistakes over and over and over again, really. You know? And I've made weight properly sometimes. I, I've made weight, like, poorly sometimes. And it shows, you know, in your actual results. You know, and then it's, this is like a, you know, regular story yeah. in the international circuit, too. I've heard a lot of, you know, Olympic champions saying they they struggle with weight cutting, yeah. weight management. I mean, it's not an easy thing. So you want... No. And so it's not just about training. So like weight, you got to diet down, discipline with your diet and diet down. So you sh uh, shed out, shed your, all your fat and then cut the last bit of it with yeah. water. Yeah. And then how about like in terms of training? I know like, you know, you have to train hard and then you have to kind of taper, they say. Yeah. Like, do sure. you believe in that? I yeah. do, yeah. So I mean, you don't want to be too tired. And this is the thing, yeah. right? When you're cutting weight, so let's say you're like 220 pounds. Yeah. You're like me, right? Yeah. But you're a little bit leaner. Yeah. You could die down to 198. Yeah. And be shredded. But yeah. Right? So you're a big dude. You're walking yeah. around 220, 230, maybe 6'2, six, 6'1. Six, you're a big yeah. guy. Ooh. All of a sudden, you're shredded at 198, and then you cut uh. 20 pounds of water weight the week up. Yeah. Right? By manipulating sodium intake and all yeah. this stuff. And generally, yeah. what they do, is a week out, you drink two gallons of water, two gallons of two gallons of water, right? A couple of days before, you drink, drop you it to one. Cut it out, yeah. Yeah, one. And then you manipulate your sodium levels. You're taking sodium initially, and then you stop taking mm. sodium. So the water just kind of flushes through your body, just get rid, rid of it. Yeah. You don't yeah. have to cut, you don't have to run as much. Right, right. You still kind of do, right? You just have to yeah. sweat all the time. So now you're getting close to that day. You're a frame of a 230 pound man. Yeah. You already have no more body fat. So there's no excess yeah. weight that you're carrying around. Yeah. And now you drop the last 10 pounds by sitting in a sauna or going for yeah. a light jog and things like this. Yeah. I mean, and then you make 178 and drink a lot of water and you rehydrate and you oh, bring dude. it all back. You take your carbohydrates that increases yeah. your glycogen stores that hold on to water. Okay. Yeah. 
You do all the stuff, sodium, yeah. all this, right? Now you're out there like competing against guys. Let's say you didn't cut weight at all. Right? Yeah. You're all. <laughs> Okay, you're 170 pounds soaking wet carrying body fat. <laughs> so you should be fighting 145. Yeah. Right? That's the division you should be fighting. Against the guy who's naturally 220 <laughs> pounds, that's a like huge difference. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But like finding the right weight class and then being in that right weight class and then making that weight properly is a huge portion of it. You know? Yeah. And just like you ask about tapering, it's very, yeah. very important. Taper. But if you're cutting weight... You have to run you the last can, weight yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I made 178 for a tournament in like March or something. And dude, I had to run the night before and the day of, and I ran probably like 10 miles <laughs> because I didn't have access to a sauna. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. So it would be like hot shower, you know, put on my sauna suit, the plastic vinyl suit, yeah. and then go for like a light jog. Right? Uh-huh. And I probably do like 10 miles in two days. So by the uh-huh. time I got out there, my legs were like tired. I'm shaking. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. explosive. You know, it was like the worst thing ever. You know, 30 seconds into the match, I was huffing and puffing. Guess Dude, what? I yeah. lost that match. Yeah. <laughs> but that was all because, yeah. like, I didn't plan and then start dieting down two months out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if you're on the circuit, you kind of always Dude. have to be on because competitions are back to back. Yeah. Yeah. You do the European tour, the Asian tour, you're in Korea one day, do the training camp. You know, China the next day, yeah. do the camp. Now you're going to Japan, do the yeah. camp for two weeks, and then you're flying back to the United States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So during that whole time, you have to be watching that skill, not to balloon up and, you know, eat too much. Right, because, like, in each country, there's a competition, right? That's the idea yeah. of a tour. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you have to sort of diet down and already peak at your stage, and you just kind of have to maintain it. So, like, yeah. being able to see where your body is, right, that's a big one, you know? And sometimes you don't have that luxury of being in the right weight class. You know, when right. Travis was fighting 81, I would have been cutting all the way down to 81 and and take it on Travis. Yeah, yeah. I was already the best guy in the U.S. at 220. Yeah. So I would just fight 220 and go international. But the problem was when I went internationally, everyone's 6'4", 6'5", cutting down from like yeah. 250. Like Kropalik yeah. was in my weight class. See, that's yeah. the difference. I fought Kropalik in competition. Lucas Kropalik. Yeah. <laughs> he's a monster. Olympic gold. He's like he's yeah. giving Teddy Renner a hard time. Guy's yeah. like 6'6". <laughs> oh, gosh. Right? He's cutting down, down to 220. I'm like yeah. walking in like 216, like chubby. <laughs> you know what I mean? There was a very, very di- big difference in the physicality of that. Right, right. So all these different things kind of matter, you know, in terms of like training. Mm-hmm. You know, let's talk about training for competition at a higher level. Uh, it's injury management too, because you're always injured. Yeah. You're always going to be injured if you're doing it at a high level. Because you, you can't rest. You gotta yeah, it's keep that going. Wear wear yeah. a tear. Yeah. yeah. Gianni tweaked his shoulder, right? He's right first uh, left. Yeah. So that was like we're posted on not doing anything with this side and we're just working on like gaining the sleeve, yeah. right? Whether it's like outside gain, inside gain, yeah. Lapel moving the arm and then gaining from the outside and lapel moving, gaining from the inside. On the side. Yeah. So like we're just doing that, or you could work on footwork, you could just do cardio, you know, where you are in the training cycle, like you understand have to understand right. where your gap is in the game and say, Hey, we're gonna do deliver training. I hate it when the right. guy comes to Georgian grip over over the top, Georgian A, Georgian B. I'm not very comfortable with Georgian B. You're not going to develop an entire robust game around it, right? Mm. But getting out of it when you face a Russian type, yeah, that can be a specific thing that we train. You know, we spend a week or two weeks doing. So yeah. when you're there, you know, it's, you know, yeah, yeah, and then just kind of like you know, making yourself like a robust system, and then uh. some offshoots for different styles. And then how to deal with each and one of those, you know, all those things, you know, lead to tournament prep and having a great coach is first and foremost, you know? I mean, I think I, you're yeah. kind of saying that throughout the episode. It's yeah. all, you need someone who knows all these things. You need a, you need a, a, you need yeah. a coach that does that and is also invested yeah. in you. Yeah. Because I know the stuff and if I'm not invested in this person, why, why bother? I wouldn't do it, yeah. It's a waste of my time, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because there's 90 other people that I could be focusing on or... yeah. You know? Goodness. Yeah. Or if I'm doing Randori, I'm not watching anybody doing Randori. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so there's that. So go up to the preparation. I mean, I, in originally, I kind of wanted to also touch on like what to bring and like day of competition stuff, like what to bring, oh, maybe how yeah, to read yeah. the brackets. And I don't know if you want to go into that. It's a little getting long. Maybe we'll touch on it yeah. quickly. I mean, yeah, yeah. you, you want to bring sandals. You want to bring your geese. You know, yeah. the secret is like you want to put some geese in your carry-on and some geese in your, right? 
yeah, the one that gets bag. checked yeah. in because if they yeah. lose your bags, which happens to a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've heard U.S. judo managers, coach ma managers on these teams, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, oh, the, the airline lost my bag and all my geese were in it. And then the manager is like, are you fucking stupid or something? Like, why yeah. did you bring two on your check-on bag? You have to yeah. standard information. It's like, what are you, what are you stupid? Yeah. But it's yeah. like, you know, not everyone knows that. You know? Yeah. So you want to do that just in case, right? You want yeah. two checked in, two carry on. Four is usually good. You bring an extra pair of pants because it's light. Yeah. You, know, you wear a rash guard in practice to sort of preserve the gi a little bit. Yeah. You know, I know people who are doing these competitions bring a little bit of detergent to wash the gi in the in the top bathtub at the hotel. Oh, yeah. For okay. reasons is good because if you're doing long stints at these things, right, internationally, you know, yeah. you're going to South America for a month. Oh, yeah. So you bring Febreze and you put it up and you spray it down. You know, I'm gonna bring bars because sometimes you don't have access to food when you're in like El Salvador competing. Yeah. You you know you're not gonna just walk down to the store and get a, a sandwich. Yeah. Right. You don't it's eat just, the yeah. don't eat their salad because they wash it in the local water. Don't get ice in your juice because ice yeah. is local water and you'll get sick. It happened to me twice. I got extremely sick in Peru, extremely sick ceviche. in Venezuela. Yeah, that was that was in a small. Some... Do not eat the local <laughs> ceviche. <laughs> yeah, the, the, I remember the we, that was yeah, the dumbest we don't need thing to I've go ever in, done, dude. We don't need to go into detail, but yeah, the, it was a mess. You right? know, <laughs> my friend from high school was down there. I told you right. Uh -huh. Yeah, like, yeah. Hey, what's up, man? You're down here for judo competition. That's amazing. You know, let me take you out to lunch. I'll tell you. Uh, like, I, I don't know, man. Had the training camp. I was with my friend Anthony. He was uh, yeah, at that tournament. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then my boy from high school was like, "Hey, man, dude, this thing is amazing. The ceviche, best ceviche you've ever had. It's really local." And my Anthony was like, "Dude, I'm not eating that." Ah, uh, oh, like, smart I'm, man. I was like, "I'm not eating that either." And then he's like, "No, it's so good. You got to try it. It's local, whatever." I was like, "You know what? I can handle it." Got sick of the dog. But guess what? I still competed. I know. But Thank God it was early was, in yeah. the week. It was early in yeah. the week. I got so you could definitely recover. ill. Yeah. I recovered a little bit. And then I had to lose weight. Oh, gosh. That's bad. Yeah. And I flew to, what was it? Argentina. I know. It was a, like a little tour, right? Yeah. And then yeah. I had to fight, uh, who was the Cuban? Silva Morales, who was like yeah. seven to the world or something. Yeah. I think he's a little Did bit you get concussed, man? He headbutted me and I got hurt. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, the morning of, I was running also uh, because I had to oh make gosh. weight. I had selected yeah. for the 5%, right? Weight increase. Oh, weight. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ridiculous. I had to make weight twice and brutal. Oh, gosh. Hard. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Day of you the know, I, I yeah. bet, like, Usain Bolt only eats McNuggets, apparently, when yeah. he's in, yeah. No, so there's a uh, contestant. Yeah. Yes. That's what people say. You know, if yeah. you eat the fast food, if you get used to it, every country you eat, the fast food's yeah. going to be similar. I've heard that yeah. before. But bring some bars, bring some Gatorade, yeah. bring some medicine. You know, that's yeah. always nice. Have like a little toiletry kit. Tape, I guess. Tape. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, getting your mind right. You know, keep your yeah. mind off the competition if you get nervous, right? Giving yourself yeah. a little bit of a distraction. Download some podcasts, scroll Instagram. Who knows? You know, just keep your mind off it a little bit and then warm up properly. Mm -hmm. Know the type of warmth that works for you. Yeah. You know, your little mental games that you play, whether it's like having a mantra, you know, yeah. having like a pre tournament warm up right. routine. What's do, you, help? do you think about strategies too? I mean, I get like look at the bracket, oh, like I know that guy, this guy, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah. And now you can just Google them and find their matches yeah. online, even back then, you know? Yeah. When I fought Anai first round of the world, yeah, took yeah. a grand slam. It was like he was number one in the world, right? Right. I remember and that. And I yeah. went online and I looked up his matches. I'm watching him. Wow, this guy is probably going to throw me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you didn't you score on him? Like you did like a. Um, I took him down. I, I should have gotten yeah. a Yuko for that because like I yeah. shot him on the leg, you know, because yeah. he's leading with his left for post yeah, the yeah. hand. And I like popped it, duffed on there, grabbed the leg and like pulled him down to the ground. I this always got. Like, I used to always yeah. get one take down on all the best guys. Yeah, I got. I, mean, I took an eye down. I didn't get a score for that. I should have. Yeah. Right when I fought in the World Sambo Championships, I fought Russia. He was a six-time world champion. I took oh, him down shit. with a high crotch once. I got yeah, one point for nice. that. Yeah. And then even when I was in college, I wrestled the NCAA champ. And then yeah. I took him down with a high crotch immediately. And got two. Oh, nice. So yeah. that's my little claim to fame, right? I'll take <laughs> down the best guys at least once. 
It takes down yeah. specialists. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, you you can watch them and then break it down. You have a coach like, hey, this guy's a strong lefty. Yeah. Yeah, I remember when I drew Mo Morales, Silva Morales, yeah. and yeah, you know, the kind-hearted man that Travis is, he gave me a phone call. Oh, says, hey man, Travis, he's yeah. a strong lefty. He has a great switch, right? Yeah, put your hands on and expect him to fake forward and go backwards, and you yeah. know, do your best, man. And I was like, fucking what? He Travis <laughs> even texted me like, call me. Right. Oh yeah, and he's like, I fought this guy a couple of weeks ago. He, he had fought him like a month ago or something. Like, yeah, yeah. And then Travis had he lost too against him, you know. And uh, oh, he was telling me, you know, to watch out for it. And that's exactly what I got caught with. He, no, I mean, he that's why he's good, right? Back yeah. and then headbutted me, and then like <laughs> you oh. can see that he changed the shape of my cheekbone. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> That's what the, uh, that's what happens. I mean, that's why he's good. I can't yeah, do it. I had like this massive like thing on my face from it. And then yeah. after the Did match, you... she came up to me, shook my hand going, oh, I'm so sorry. You know, I, uh, yeah. I I'm like, it's okay, oh, man. Sorry. Like, it's sorry, man. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, guys, this, um, all, we went through a lot of stuff, you know, Yeah. Co preparing for competition is not, it's not a simple thing and no. you just have to. I think the big thing is you have to really know why you're doing it because yeah, there's a lot of downside too. Huge downside. And you need to and talk to your coach. You need a good coach that knows all this stuff. And if you want to go into a circuit, it's like a whole thing. That we'll pro we can probably talk a lot more, but that's the gist of it. I hope you guys liked it. Anything else to before we close? Nope. You guys can reach me out one to one also if you want to talk a little bit more and have a little bit yeah. of online coaching. I do offer yeah. that on my website. It's on the pricing mm -hmm. tab. Shantarigashi.com. Um, yeah, best of luck to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yep. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. And then uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode.